Hi wonderful humans! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new around here, my name is Chuk Gwen, and on this YouTube channel, I like to geek out about art supplies, show you behind the scenes of my art process, and share with you some fun DIY projects. In today's video, I want to talk about leveling up in watercolors. So a little bit of a background about me. I am a watercolor floral artist and I started my watercolor journey around five or six years ago when I was in college trying the medium out for the first time. Since then, I've been experimenting with different art mediums and crafting uh, and I realized that I wanted to go back and dive deeper into the world of watercolors again. So I wanted to show you uh, um, what kind of art supplies that I use to transition from a beginner watercolor artist to a more intermediate advanced watercolor artist. Stay tuned for the rest of this video and I hope you enjoy. If you do, give this video a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. Alright, let's get to the video. Before I dive deeper into this video, I want to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there. So when I started using uh, watercolor supplies as a beginner, I would often use the cheapest supplies out there, uh, things that I could find on, at Michael's or Joann's, uh, and at this point in my journey when I was starting, that was the most cost-effective way for me to start trying out this medium. However, over the years as I've kind of curated my craft and um, I got more experience out of watercolors, I began um, buying more art supplies that are more quality, like artist quality. Uh, but in this video, I kind of want to show you ways where you can get artist quality supplies, but on a budget. Since, you know, when I was in college, uh, I didn't really have a lot of money for art supplies right now. Kind of still at that stage where I don't want to splurge um, like $100 for a watercolor palette. However, uh, these are some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my years of practicing watercolors. So. Uh, if this, these supplies are not in your price range right now, that's okay. Um, you can always work up to that. However, my best tip is to continue using the supplies that you really like and just get that practice and get that experience in. Um, but personally for me, I wanted to try out different artist quality supplies and kind of see how that affects my painting and I realized that artist quality paints and quality paper really does make a big difference when you are uh, practicing watercolors so that's kind of my this big disclaimer out there is this is just the supplies that I've been using that I really like for my style of painting if it doesn't work for you then there are so many other YouTube videos out there that you can explore but with that out of the way let's talk about watercolor paints all right, let's talk about watercolor paints, one of my favorite things to talk about that I can geek on about all day. So uh, there are three different brands that I currently use that I would like to recommend to you. Um, and these brands are Holbein, Daniel Smith, and M. Graham. So if you've ever heard of these three names, then you already know that they're pretty big giants in the art industry, um, particularly in watercolors. Uh, my first ever set of artist quality paints um, are from Holbein and my tip uh, for finding cost effective ways to get you know a lot of paint for not a huge price tag is to look on Etsy. Um, I'm an Etsy seller myself and through looking on Etsy I've found that a lot of sellers like Rosie Art Treasures, where I got this palette from, they have an abundance of different watercolor brands and tubes that they typically pour into quarter pans, half pans, full pans, and they put into sets like this. Um, so this here is a 24 color set from Holbein um, that I got for around $48 um, on Etsy. And this is a really great way to sample the line of Holbein paints and see what colors you like, um, see how the paints work. Uh, and I think it's a really awesome way to try out all these different colors. So 
Um, after buying this set, I wanted to try out some... So Holbein is a Japanese brand of watercolors. I wanted to try out some brands that are currently in the US and that's where Daniel Smith and M. Graham comes from. So <laughs> once I tried Daniel Smith, I got hooked, let me tell you. But the set that I wanted to recommend to you is the uh, Daniel Smith introductory set of six watercolor tubes. Um, there are two uh, warm and cool colors for each of the primary colors. So you have two reds, two yellows, and two blues. And just having this set of primary colors, you can mix and create all sorts of different colors just from these six colors. Um, and so that is why I recommend them because when you are starting out as a watercolor artist, um, transitioning to intermediate or advanced levels, I think that you need to have um, a good idea of how to mix watercolors. Um, when you are buying you know, those beginner sets full of like 24, 48 different colors, it can seem very overwhelming and it may not teach you that color theory and color mixing knowledge that you need to know when you are advancing up. Uh, but with just these six colors, I was able to try out this artist quality brand um, and also learn how to mix my own colors. And I wanted to show you a color chart that I made uh, using my introductory set. I'll give you a close up of this. Uh, but as you can see, uh, there are so many different colors that you can get just from mixing these six colors. Um, these tubes I got from Amazon. I think they were around $24. So I think it's quite affordable way to try out artist quality paints and sometimes they can get really expensive like $100, $200 palettes. So if you are leveling up, definitely check out Daniel Smith paints and I gotta tell you once I tried them I was instantly hooked uh, and I got myself kind of um, another set I guess uh, so once I knew that I really liked Daniel Smith I invested uh, in more tubes of paint so I have um, eight tubes of paints here from Daniel Smith um, that I've acquired uh, these past few months uh, if you're wondering, by the way, this is a cigar box that I got from my local art store and I love about it is that it has slots here for cigars but now I repurpose them so that they can hold my Daniel Smith tubes and I think it's a really cool way to um, present and collect these watercolor tubes. <laughs> so yeah, definitely check out Daniel Smith paints. Awesome, awesome range of colors and I think you might get addicted just like me if you use them. All right, last but not least, I want to recommend M. Graham Paints. So M. Graham is a company that I think is based in Oregon, whereas Daniel Smith is based in Seattle, Washington. And I think the cool thing about M. Graham Paints is that they are made with honey. Uh, this is like one of the coolest things, and this is my first ever like set of watercolor tubes that have honey in them. Never tried anything with honey, uh, but I thought it was like a really cool natural ingredient. Uh, and what I like about this basic set from M. Graham is that it comes with your primary. So it has Azo Yellow, Permanent Alizar and Crimson, Ultramarine, Ultramarine Blue, and then it comes with two convenience colors, Sap Green and Burnt Sienna. Uh, so you have your primaries, you have your two convenience colors, and just from that you can mix up an array of different colors from these tubes. This is a set of five 15ml tubes, and I think it came around to be $48 on Amazon. So with Amazon, sometimes the price fluctuates, um, but these are a little bit more expensive than the Daniel Smith tubes that I have, but it also comes in a bigger tube size. Uh, so I really enjoy using the M. Graham paints. I find that they are super creamy, um, so easily rewettable in the pans. Uh, and the, the, the only thing is, um, because the paints have honey in them, it kind of prevents the paints from drying as much as the other 
quality paints do, they are still kind of wet and sticky to the touch. So depending on different uh, climates and humidities, uh, it can really affect um, the viscosity of the paints. So just kind of putting it out there. Uh, I don't think it's like the best paint to travel. Um, I've heard different stories from other artists about how um, it's not really travel friendly. It's more of a studio paint. Um, so I don't really travel with these Ungram paints. I usually use them in my art studio at home. The next thing I want to talk about a little bit more is watercolor paper. So as we know, watercolor paint um, can vary in price uh, depending on their quality and so does watercolor paper. And what I've learned throughout my years of experience is that color or uh, watercolor paper really does affect the quality of your painting. So when I first started painting, I practiced with this Canson XL watercolor paper. Uh, it's very affordable. You can buy this at most craft stores. Uh, I think I got this at Michael's and it's a really good price. I think it was around $10. Um, and for a beginner, I think this was an excellent um, paper choice. However, um, as I got deeper into watercolors, I realized that um, there are so many different brands out there that have such better quality paper. Um, and there are two um, brands in particular that I'm gonna reference, and I just love their watercolor paper. However, it can be a bit pricey. Uh, watercolor paper can range from like $30 to upwards of like, 50, 70 dollars. Um, I'm just throwing some numbers out there, <laughs> but my uh, intention is that it's really expensive for good quality paper. And what, what is good quality paper? So what I look for in um, a watercolor paper that I use now is that it has to be 100% cotton. Uh, cotton uh, really just absorbs water and watercolor so well. Um, and in combined with these artist quality paints, game changer, absolutely. Uh, so the two brands that I'm talking about is Saunders Waterford, 100% uh, watercolor paper, and Arches uh, watercolor paper. So these are the two brands that I really love. Um, Arches is kind of a notorious watercolor paper in the watercolor world, but I think I really like Saunders Waterford. Um, both are 100% uh, cotton cold press, so there's different types of watercolor paper textures. There's cold press, there's hot press, and rough. However, for my style of painting, I always gravitate towards the cold press. Um, I think it's perfect for the style of painting that I do. Um, however, one tip that I have to cutting the cost um, of watercolor paper down is um, by going to your local art supply store and buying those really big sheets of watercolor paper. Um, so I like to buy the 22 by 30 paper and then just go home and use a paper cutter, use scissors, and just cut it. So these are all of the different pieces that I was able to get from just one piece of watercolor paper. Uh, for me, this is a super cost-effective and economic way to sample the really good quality paper. Um, I think the big sheets are usually around uh, six to eight dollars at my local art supply store. Um, if you don't have a local art supply store, it might be a little bit difficult getting your hands on these giant sheets of paper. However, you can go to Jerry's, um, Cheap Joe's. Um, and those kind of art supply stores online. However, I find that they typically come in like bigger packs, so like 10, 20 packs, um, and those usually run you 50 to $100. So for me, six to $8 per piece of paper that I can cut up um, to 18 to 20 different pieces of paper that I can just size on my own. Great, great. Uh, quality uh, game changer right there. So just a tip, um, go to your local art supply store, support them and get some really good watercolor paper for not a huge 
price tag. So that is a budget way to get watercolor paper. Uh, what I like about the Saunders Waterford paper and the Arches paper is that it just makes my paintings look super smooth. Um, the I don't get weird blotches. Uh, sometimes with this Canson watercolor paper, I have just the places where it looks really blotchy, the paper looks kind of waxy, um, but I don't really get that with the Saunders Waterford and the Arches. So I really recommend these two brands. Um, Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is a new day, new outfit. Uh, this filming of this video took place over several days um, because my battery didn't last that long. But anyway, I wanted to talk about my favorite brushes and the kind of uh, brushes that I use for my watercolor paintings. Um, I don't really have any expensive brands that I use, so when I first started out watercoloring, I received a set of brushes um, that I currently have most of them in my brush roll right now uh, from a friend, and I've been using those brushes for quite some time. However, um, there were a lot of brushes that had a lot of wear and tear on them, so I bought um, a set of Grace Arts brushes from Amazon to replace some of those, um, as well as trying out some different brushes so this is a kind of brush that i bought from jerry's artorama i believe it is a mimic Kalinsky brush so i've heard that name around and so i wanted to try out um two of these brushes for myself jerry's artorama has um a really great selection of brushes and there are some brushes that they let you try out for one to two uh, dollars so that's a really awesome way to try out different watercolor brushes um so yeah i hope to uh have more expensive brushes in the future however for the meantime for the time being i can do with the brushes that i currently have so that's my recommendation is just try to find a really good brush um, that you like that has good control um, what I look for is in a round brush is a really nice tip so after you know doing your watercolor paintings and dipping it in water a lot that it, the brush tip still holds and it's not um, like as frayed so those are some tips so just having watercolor paint, paper, and brushes are the basic things that you need to get started in watercoloring. However, if you want to level up your game and maybe um, you know show some more advanced techniques like sketching and stuff, I recommend um, some of these tools uh, for sketching before you paint your watercolor paintings and that is some Prismacolor Coal Erase Pencils. So I recently picked these up from my local art store. They had a variety of different um, Coal Erase Pencils, but what's really cool about these pencils um, is that they come with an eraser on the end, and so you can erase your sketchings. I prefer red and blue um, to sketch out my paintings before drawing them um, because they are a warm and cool color, and you won't see them as well um, after the painting is done. I noticed that with graphite pencils or just regular lead pencils that I use to sketch, sometimes the watercolors would mix with them and um, it doesn't look quite right. <laughs> so I've started sketching with these pencils and I love that they're erasable. But if you are going to be sketching with lead pencil or graphite, you know, it's perfectly fine. That's what I did for a very long time. I recommend using a kneaded eraser um, to erase. Uh, when I first started uh, sketching um, and whenever I made mistakes, I would use my, you know, just a regular plain old eraser to erase. And I noticed that it would kind of tear up my paper a little bit. I haven't used it um, on good quality paper, but I've noticed on my Canson XL water paper that um, some of the paper would lift off every time I erase harshly on the paper. Um, so that wasn't good. <laughs> uh, learn from me, don't do that. Get yourself a kneaded eraser. This is very cheap, about one or two dollars um, at most art supply stores. Uh, and all you need to do is just kind of press on the paper to erase um, and the lead or graphite will um, be picked up by the kneaded eraser and so you're not um harshly erasing and ruining your paper that way so i definitely recommend um these coal erase uh 
color pencils from Prismacolor and this kneaded eraser as just some miscellaneous supplies to help you level up in watercolors. All right, so the last two items that I wanna recommend uh, for watercolor intermediates and advanced um, is masking fluid and some empty half pans uh, with magnets. Uh, so first, masking fluid, what is it? Um, this is a Winsor & Newton masking fluid that I use. It's colorless, uh, and basically with masking fluid, uh, you can put it directly onto your watercolor paper. Once it dries, um, you can go over uh, your watercolor paper with like, you know, watercolors, make a wash, and then uh, after the masking fluid dries, you can peel it off and it will still like preserve that um, watercolor paper color. So it's really great um, when you wanna do like a wash first as your background and then go back in and put in details in whatever is on the foreground. So with my floral painting style, I'll cover up the parts where there are flowers and then do a wash um, in the background, peel off this masking fluid and go back in with more watercolors for the flower details. And however, with masking fluid, I do warn that you shouldn't use just your regular watercolor uh, brushes since they will ruin it. I definitely recommend um, having some of these silicone um, tip brushes because once the masking fluid dries, it won't adhere to your brush and destroy them. Uh, it will just be on the silicone tip and then you can just um, wipe it away and it comes off very cleanly so it just doesn't destroy your brushes so make note of that do not put masking fluid on your favorite brushes because it's gonna be really hard to get off and you're gonna ruin your favorite brushes all right last but not least I recommend these watercolor half pans um, so this is what it looks like it's just um, a watercolor pan that you see in a lot of um, watercolor sets, uh, but I recommend just getting um, a bunch of these. So I got this from Amazon, I believe it was like a set of 48 pieces, and it came with some um, magnetic squares. Uh, I really like this because I can just buy my own tubes of watercolor paint and then put them in these uh, half pans and from there I can use the magnet to attach it to any like magnetic surface. Um, I've done DIY projects where I use um, metal tins that I you know repurpose and put these watercolor half pans in there and created my own watercolor palette. Uh, so it's very versatile and there's so many different ways for you to uh, utilize these empty half pans so if you are somebody who wants to level up and buy their own more expensive artist quality paints uh, this is a really great way to start forming your own palettes using um, all your different paints and your paint palette so yeah just Amazon um, it's really cheap, about I think seven or eight dollars for 48 of these. Um, if you do have a 3D printer, uh, my fiance was able to 3D print some half pans for me uh, that I can just label and put my own paints in. So those are some ways for you to utilize your watercolor paints. Thank you so much for tuning into this video of um, paint supplies that I recommend for watercolor artists who want to advance more in the medium. Uh, I am and by no means an expert in the watercolor field. However, I did start watercoloring uh, years ago and I picked up a few tips and tricks over the years of watercoloring. So I hope this video helped you kind of explore the medium more and I hope that I've shown you that there are tips and tricks out there to help you reduce the cost of being a watercolor artist um, because it is quite costly buying so much watercolor paints and art supplies so if there's any way that I can help you uh, be more cost effective in your watercolor journey I'm all for it so if you learned something if this video uh, was something that you enjoyed please give this video a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel for more watercolor floral art content. Um, I love all things watercolor florals and I hope you'll 
join me uh, in my YouTube journey. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.